JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's Daily Market Review for November the 30th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against uh, the majority of the other major currencies on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday. It gained versus NZD, AUD, CAT, and, in, and CAT in that order, while it underperformed versus CHF, the Euro, and the Japanese Yen. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar and the other safe havens, Yen and Franc, combined with the weakening of the risk linked Kiwi, Aussie, and Looney, suggests uh, that uh, markets may have continued trading in a risk off manner following Friday's, um, Friday's sell off. However, Turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that this was not the case. European and US indices we are a sea of green, though sentiment deteriorated again today in Asia. We believe that the rebound during the European and US sessions may have been triggered by comments from a South African doctor that symptoms of the Omicron, uh, Omicron COVID variant were so far mild and could be treated at home. Later in the day, US President Joe Biden said that fresh lockdowns due to the new variant were off the table for now, adding to the investor relief. In our view, all this uh, shows how sensitive market participants still are when it comes to the coronavirus and its new variant. We believe that this will be the main theme for a while more. Uh, so, with that in mind, we are very, we are very reluctant to say that uh, market concerns have diminished and that yesterday's rebound is the beginning of a long-lasting recovery. Any new negative headline has high chances of resulting in another leg of, uh, ma of uh, massive selling. Indeed, at the time of uh, writing this report, news hit the wires that Moderna CEO said that there will be a material drop in vaccine effectiveness against uh, Omicron. We believe that following the subdued sentiment during the Asian session, this could result in further deterioration and we see the case for European and US indices to reverse south as early as today. Now, yesterday, besides headlines surrounding COVID, we also got Powell's testimony, which which he is uh, said to present. Uh, he will present before Congress today and, uh, and tomorrow. The Fed chief expressed concerns over the Omicron variant, saying that it uh, muddies the outlook. Although he did not uh, refer directly to the Fed's monetary policy plans, he said that uh, the new strain poses downside risks uh, to to the employment and economic activity, and also increases uncertainty for inflation. We will closely monitor today's Q&A session after he testifies before the Senate Banking Committee for clearer clues as to how the new variant can affect the Fed's future, cor future cor course of action. According to the Fed Fund Futures, markets still expect the first rate increase to be delivered in August, and if Powell's remarks keep that option on the table, then dollar could resume its um, its latest uptrend against most most of its uh, major peers, especially the risk-linked ones. However, deep declines could be possible in case Powell suggests that he and his colleagues should uh, should adopt a more cautious stance uh, moving forward. We will get to hear from several other Fed officials during the week, including Vice Chair Richard Clarida and we are eager to find out whether they have changed their minds or not. Now, today, ahead of uh, Powell's testimony, we get uh, Eurozone's preliminary inflation numbers for November. The headline rate is forecast to have risen to 4.4% year-over-year from 4.1%, while the HICP excluding energy and food rate is expected to have ticked up to 22 from 2.1%. 2 
But said, bearing in mind that Germany's harmonized rate jumped to 6% year over year, we see the case for the headline rate of the blog as a whole to rise by more than anticipated as well. However, with Europe adopting new restrictions due to the fast spreading coronavirus and its new variant, we don't expect ECB officials to start thinking uh, tightening monetary policy anytime soon. After all, underlying inflation is expected to stay slightly above the bank's objective of 2%, while President Lagarde has repeatedly highlighted that tightening monetary policy now to rein, to rein in inflation could choke off the Eurozone's recovery. On top of that, ECB executive member Isabel, Isabel Schnabel said yesterday that the central bank believes inflation peaked in November, which adds to the narrative that it is premature for the governing council to start thinking about interest rate hikes. Therefore, even if the euro extends its latest recovery due to higher than expected numbers, we will not call for a bullish reversal. We will class this as a corrective advance. Now, as uh, for the rest of today's events, besides Powell's testimony and Eurozone's inflation data, we also have Canada's GDP for the third quarter. Expectations are for the quarter-over-quarter -quarter annualized rate to have rebounded to 3% from minus 1.1%, which combined with a decent employment report on Friday may increase speculation for a rate hike by the Bank of Canada soon. Remember that at their latest gathering, Canadian policymakers unexpectedly ended their quantitative easing program maintaining an optimistic stance. Having said all that though, it remains to be seen whether the Omicron uh, COVID variant will be a reason for changing plans. Now tonight, during the Asian session, Australia releases its uh, GDP data for the third quarter with the forecasts pointing to a 2.7% quarter over quarter contraction after a 0.7% expansion in the previous quarter. Despite market participants anticipating uh, around three rate hikes next year, the RBA has been adamant that the timing suggested by market pricing is not the appropriate one. Therefore, a negative GDP rate would add more credence to the bank's view that the earliest year for hiking rates may be 2023, and thereby add more pressure to the Aussie, which, as a risk-linked currency, we expect to feel uh, to also feel the heat of a deteriorating broader market sentiment. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, bye. Have a great day. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.